Some disturbing new video out of Cincinnati. The man you see sitting down here is Thomas Robinson. He's been charged with murder. As a police officer changes out of his handcuffs, he goes for the gun. He never did manage to get the gun, but cops say that the guns are locked into their holster for this very reason. And other officers in the room eventually did subdue him with tasers. You might think, what a stupid way to try and make an escape. But it sounds like Robinson had something else in mind. Apparently, he kept yelling, kill me, during the struggle. He's now been charged with assault in addition to murder, as well as other drug charges that he'd been facing since November. The Illinois legislature has approved a bill that would give Muslim Americans a formal vo voice in the state government. If the governor signs the bill, Illinois would be the first state in the U.S. to pass such a law. The measure creates a 21-member advisory council of Muslims to give them influence on state policy. The governor and legislative leaders would get to appoint the Muslim council members. The Chicago Tribune reports one Islamic leader who's pushing for the council says all governors in America are obligated to have an Islamic council. Federal agents arrested an 18-year-old Indiana man on Tuesday, they say, of course, because he was traveling to join ISIS. DeMarco, he has an extensive history of contacts with the FBI, all related to terrorism. Back in 2013, he made his first contact with the FBI after posting several terror videos to YouTube. They went to his high school, they interviewed him, and according to the court documents, the school and the FBI tried to dissuade him from getting too wrapped up in radical extremism. They were not successful. In April 2015, there were reports that he was going around a local park trying to recruit other teens to join ISIS. In 2015 alone, he made five attempts to travel wow. abroad to countries that are known for being controlled by the Islamic State. Lastly, and most concerningly, just a month ago, he was searching online for terror targets in Indiana and also shopping for pressure cookers, which we know were used, of course, by the Boston bombers. A mother who punished her sons for breaking the law is now in trouble with the law herself. 30-year-old Shaquana Spears wanted to show three of her sons some tough love by whipping them for breaking into a neighbor's home. I was being a mother who love her kids, who want to protect her kids and steer them in the right direction. According to police documents, Spears struck her 13-year-old son multiple times with an electrical cord. She says it was a belt. The teen had lacerations on his arms and marks across his body. Two other sons also had visible injuries. I reacted and I'm the bad guy. Like, it's, it's not right. The single mother of six was arrested and could be charged with two felony counts of child cruelty. She lost her job and custody of her kids. Many in the community support her actions, including Alicia Nicholson, the neighbor who was allegedly burglarized. You know, her kids done wrong, and she spanked them or whooped them, and I commend her for that. A deadlock Supreme Court is reigniting a contentious election year debate here in the United States. The court split 4-4 yesterday on President Obama's immigration plan to allow more than 4 million illegal immigrants to stay in the U.S. Well, good morning. So, I mean, essentially what we got yesterday was a non-decision, and the justices tied 4-4, four to four, and that kept in place the lower court ruling, which had struck down the program. Now, 26 states had sued over President Obama's 2014 executive action, and that would have granted more than 4 million undocumented immigrants a stay from deportation. And with the court not issuing a ruling, it now leaves millions of people in limbo, and the president expressed his disappointment yesterday. The fact that the Supreme Court wasn't able to issue a decision today doesn't uh, just set the system back even further. It takes us further from the country that we aspire to be. Governmental and religious organizations in Russia have called for an international effort to help protect religious minorities in Syria from Daesh and other terrorist groups. The Imperial Orthodox Palestine Society, the oldest non-governmental organization in Russia, has been assisting Syrian Christians for more than a year. Russia is one of the first countries that came to the defense of Christians who were expelled from the territory where Christianity was born. As representatives of the Russian public, we affirm the need to protect the Christian population from expulsion and extermination, and also we declare that everything possible should be done so that they can return to their historical lands. At least. Ten Russian service members have died during anti-terror operations in Syria since September 2015. Officials in Moscow have expressed their disappointment with the lack of international cooperation in the fight against terror groups. The time for silence and patience is long gone. 
Veteran civil rights activist Congressman John Lewis led the more than 100 Democrats flowing in and out of the House chamber throughout the day. We're calling on the leadership of the House to bring common sense gun control legislation to the House floor. Give us a vote. No bill. No 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 Republicans tried to begin the day's agenda around noon, but with Democrats refusing to cede the floor, instead they declared recess. Shut the mics off, shut the cameras off, but they're not going to shut us off. No. Shutting off the cameras and microphones, leaving members to stream the sit-in onto social media from their iPhones. In shows of solidarity, some Senate Democrats brought over snacks. Majority Leader Harry Reid, Elizabeth Warren and Chris Murphy walked over to the House chamber. I hope they stay in there for as long as it takes. Murphy led a nearly 15-hour filibuster last week demanding that Senate Republican leaders allow votes on gun control. They did, and all of the measures failed. Today, a spokesperson for House Speaker Paul Ryan said the House cannot operate without members following the rules of the institution. Lewis said history has shown otherwise. Sometimes you have to turn things upside down to set them right side up. Three Syrian refugees reportedly raped a little girl at Knife Point in Idaho before urinating on her body, an incident that prompted furious residents to accuse Twin Falls City Council members of covering up the assault. The sexual assault allegedly took place on June 2nd, but has received virtually no media attention aside from one vague KMVT report. However, residents have been circulating what really happened on social media, with the creeping Sharia blog reporting that the victim was a young girl who was born premature and is less developed for her age. The victim's grandmother found the victim and then called the girl's mother who called the police. The police took two and a half hours to arrive, but were unable to take any action due to the language barrier. When she arrived, the mother of the alleged rapist was only able to say, no police, while the father reportedly congratulated his 13-year-old son. Video of the entire assault was captured on the boy's cell phone. But according to the Idaho statesman, the Twin Falls County prosecutor, Grant Loeb, says there were no Syrians involved, there was no knife involved, and there was no gang rape. Loeb continued, there is a small group of people in Twin Falls County whose life goal is to eliminate refugees and thus far they have not been constrained by the truth. They have not been constrained by the truth in the past and I don't expect them to be constrained by the truth in the future. Truth. These supposed city leaders would have the good people of Twin Falls believe there isn't any invasion of psychotic refugees gradually flooding the United States that will soon resemble the horror transpiring in Europe. Just listen to your elected leaders. They know best, right? Well, so the first item is uh, general public input. If there is anyone here from the public who wishes to address the council on an issue that is not on tonight's agenda, now is your chance to please come forward. We've been made aware of a uh, situation, an alleged assault of a minor child, and uh, we can't get any information on it. Apparently, it's been indicated that it was uh, the perpetrators were four Muslim youth that uh, conducted this uh I guess it was rape, and we've heard that it's consensual, but my concern is there's no such thing as consensual rape of a minor. I am telling you, I am not aware of a news story about allegations of an assault against a minor in our community by Islamists. Idaho's First News has confirmed that a reported sexual assault around the Fonbrook Apartments in Twin Falls is being investigated by the Twin Falls Police Department. The incident allegedly occurred on June 2nd. Twin Falls County Prosecutor Grant Lopes has confirmed the investigation but says there will be no charges filed in the case until the investigation is complete. Unconfirmed reports concerning the case are circulating on social media, but no one will comment officially on the case while it is still under investigation. Where is the national media on this story? The only outrage is actually from the politically correct downplaying the crime, as Snopes.com has labeled the information circulating on the web as mostly false. And it appears Loeb actually was right, technically. The miners accused of the assault weren't Syrian. They were from Sudan and Iraq, and the rest of the details are hidden from public view because miners committed the heinous act. Loeb's BS is correct.
But rather than protect America's children by getting to the bottom of it and calming any fears brewing within the local community, the Twin Falls City Council would have anyone concerned branded a bigot and a white supremacist. The council was also grilled as to how a mosque was approved after just 24 hours, whereas a new home application would take at least two weeks just to process just another blatant example of what may be coming to or without you even knowing is currently happening in your community. You might look at us and think that we're some kind of a coalition of weirdos and and actually there's professionals, there's business owners, there's college graduates. We're not just a bunch of weird people. We're people that are living here in this community paying our taxes. We're nationals of somewhere in the United States or Idaho and we have what we feel anyway are legitimate concerns. Due to mounting pressure from the Twin Falls community, the families of the boys accused of the assault have since been evicted.